What's up guys, welcome back to Who Said This with Naomi Welcome to Kulu. On this podcast, we quiz a local journalist based on what's been said by a local politician or a public figure. It also gives you at home the opportunity to know the people behind the microphones, behind the press conferences, you know, behind the headlines. Today, I'm super excited to have one of my best friends, Ukaya Lise Kumalo. Ladies and gents, help me in welcoming the one and only Kaya Lise. Hey, how are you, Kaya Lili? Hey, it's still alive. <laughs> how are you? Know? That was a, a brilliant intro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Still, I rise. That is that has become your official tagline. I mean, you know what? This tagline has kept me in the most <laughs> turbulent times. So I sold her on carrying it in the most like trying times. I always reflect on this phrase and it keeps me going. Yeah. So this phrase. It's quite significant to me. <laughs> so Kaya, for people who do not know who are you, do you mind just introducing yourself? Like Uber and when and why and why are you important? So I'll try to keep it short now because you know me, I always try and use words. So I'm a South African based journalist and um, I'm in born and bred in Gozuna Natal almost in a very unknown town from Tuba Tuba. That's right in the northern part of Kazuna town. I always say Richard's Bay because you know, that's the only thing people know. <laughs> yeah, whether you look at the weather, <laughs> whether you look at the weather reports, they always say Durban, Richard's Bay and many other places. So I love South Africa. I, I'm a patriot and I mean, I'm a journalist as well, like I've said, but I have particular interest around foreign affairs and for me this is an area oftentimes now i always say south african newsrooms really don't understand it because there are lots of intricacies there are lots of areas there that are really fascinating but i always love it i always try to bring uh, the simplified version you know if they talk about bilateral talks and always mm. bring the nuggets that would always make sense i hope it does make sense <laughs> <laughs> you are of course you have been labeled the diplomat in this um, um journalist uh journalism field uh kaya one of the things that you highlighted now is that how um the newsroom is actually neglecting the the current affairs um segment or the current affairs you know, in South Africa, basically, we don't give it so much or invest so much resources in covering current affairs. And, you know, I've read a, an interesting tweet that said that South Africa, I think it's an, um, it, not an, um, a selective, but there's a word that like South Africa was compared to America where we just look at ourselves and it's only just about us and the rest of the world um, does not exist. And so I think that might be the reason why we don't really focus on um, international relations, especially looking into Africa. But what has motivated you to look into what's happening, you know, in, in Africa, what's happening across the globe, not just South African news? I think, no, I mean, from the outset, it goes back to my childhood. You know, I remember so vividly how I've, I've always been fascinated by cross-border activities. And yes. so where I grew up, you know, we, we grew up so close to Mozambique. So yeah. my father, you know, would always go to Mozambique. He would always go there for his own, you know, private things. And I was always fascinated by the passport. You know, <laughs> yes. you know when you, when, <laughs> when you get to the border, it gets stamped. But apart from that, no. I mean, there are a lot of things really that I do believe us as South Africa, we can do in terms of exploring this very critical field, especially because foreign affairs determines trade, the yeah. issues pertaining to the global economy, the issues pertaining to the global challenges, whether you look at climate change. And I do understand, you know, newsrooms face litany of challenges. Resources are overstretched, whether you're looking at how we cover the local stories. And I think coronavirus really has just been a devastating thing. It's rolled back a lot of progress that 
newsroom had made the traveling that we're doing from time to time mm. so now there's a lot to take into account if you want if you want to go and travel to a certain country but i hope one day the assignment editors the newsrooms will see the value in foreign affairs but mm. also now you know let me not just limit myself to foreign affairs do you know that my very first gig was anchoring <laughs> oh, yes, you know yes, that? yes, yes. <laughs> and how was how was that? How was how was anchoring? Do you miss it? Do you want to go back to it? And where were you anchoring for people who don't know? Okay, so this is in 2008. So I'm quite an old fella, you know. <laughs> so this was a community radio station in Durban. Uh, it's Hinvani FM. Uh, so it's a pre predominantly Indian area, right in the southern part of Devon. So I really had a good time because also the value of community radio station. Yeah. Resources are limited. You're on your own. You write your own bulletin. You populate your own bulletin. So basically, you, it's a one-man show. But you know, there are lots of lessons that you get from that. So it teaches you a lot about using resources prudently and making sure that you excel you know but i do miss it you know uh i i loved it so much and i know for every anchor when you say and finally and that's fine. always the best time wrapping up and who <laughs> yeah. who have been your influences you know in, in this industry jeepers no i mean i have so many colossal names i can think of the late polani guala oh, yes. the likes of jeremy mags and oh, yes. you know it, it was quite a dream come true eventually having an opportunity to work with him calling him a colleague and mm -hmm. i i remember so when i got to the nca in 2016 you know i had to do this live crossing with jeremy Max. oh yes. my goodness now you have no idea i literally wanted to run away <laughs> <laughs> what happened i wanted to tell <laughs> <laughs> i i i i was just a band of nerves oh. i was too scared i was like oh my god will i be able to utter a single word will mm. i be able to be well composed Will I stay and just be very fully acquainted with the content of the day? But you know what? Guess what? I sailed across mm. and, you know, we, we got opportunities to interact. But I mean, I, I have so many others as well. I also do love the, the likes of Radio Clubby as well. Yes. Uh, Sakina Kamwendo, yes. wonderful souls in the industry. You, you tweet Sakina a lot. before, Even before you got to ESCA, you tweet Sakina a lot. So... Who, uh, what is the biggest flop you've made on air while doing a live crossing? Like, where you just like, where your words were just minced all over the place and you are not making sense. Do you still remember that moment? Woo, you know what? I have no recollection. And I'm afraid this is not Zondo's commission. But let me try to think now. You know, broadcasting is a very brutal medium, mm. especially when you bring the visuals. Yes. So I always say, you know, when it's, I mean, radio is also equally brutal, but once it becomes audiovisual medium, there are lots of challenges because if an anchor asks me a certain question, and I'm saying to myself, oopsie, I'm <laughs> like, I don't play. let me yeah. try and find a way to deflect. Let me find a way to say, you know what? That's a very critical question. But so far, as there are other issues that are coming mm. up. So now I'm trying to think. I mean, I've had few instances where I would try to think of a word and I will have a mental block where yeah. I'm not able to think where i'm trying to say i'm trying to to think you know a very practical example so you know like you if you're trying to say for example a car and then you say you know what the movement of the things that are moving on the road <laughs> <laughs> something <to> like that. <laughs> yeah so i've had those instances but apart from that i think i'm still really waiting for that moment where i black out where perhaps I, I just say, you know what? Maybe I just don't know what to say. <laughs> so I haven't got that. I can't do it. this. Um, I wanted to ask <laughs> you also about um, uh, Noto Olo, who just um, 
you know, uh, did her last podcast then yesterday at SABC. Um, do you have anything to say in, in that regard? My goodness, you know, back in the days, Neo, you know, the seven, the seven thirty bulletin at the time, and uh, the seven o'clock, you know, for those who grew up watching the English bulletin, but. At 7.30, you know, my father, let me tell you something about my father. My father is a very conservative Zulu man, right? Mm. <laughs> so more often than not, my recollection of that time was that when he was around, he would always insist and say, you know what? We're watching now the Zulu or Kosa Bulletin. Mm. And I think Mam Nokolokon Brom is leaving an incredible mark, you know, I mean, last night, Noah, you saw it yourself. The president had to readjust his time from mm. seven o'clock to seven thirty. So it speaks volumes about somebody who did fantastically well and mm. someone who was proud of her of her own heritage, of her own roots, of her own language. You know, the prowess, the proficiency of her Corsa, and how she has been able to inspire so many people, mm. non corsa speakers. You know, you had mm. so many people's, uh, you know, reaction on Twitter, where they were saying, you know what, I actually didn't know what she said, but I could see yes. from her facial expression, you know, you could read, it was, it's the goosebumps. I mean, you could mm. literally feel, because I watched the bulletin as well. Mm. And it was such a second to none experience. It was, absolutely awesome it was beautiful it, it, it was beautiful i mean she even, she even choked on her words when she um tried to say i mean it, oh, was, wow. it, it was beautiful a very, memory. it was just a spiritual time um, last night um, i wanted to i want to ask because you know i hardly hear about your father and like tonight you've mentioned him so many times what role has he played in your life to be where you are today? I think one of the regrets I, I have in my life now is, I mean, my parents were always busy, you know, they were always doing their own things. And so I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Oh, yes. And yes, but, but whenever my father was around, um, one of the greatest things uh, I always do remember, and in fact, he's still alive, you know, we, we're still talking from time to time. But, you know, I, I call it a regret because, like, as much as he was there, like, you, it would be once in a while. Mm. So, like, I always think about, like, I wish if, like, if he was present almost every single day of my life, mm -hmm. like spending time with my father, spending so many things and sharing so many experiences growing up uh, and so forth. Um, so he has played a very tremendous role. He has always been there supporting me financially. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> These days. We are journalists. Like, oh, you're working now. <laughs> and I'm like, I need a rescue package, Dad. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're a working man. So it's always my mother who's sympathizing with me, saying, oh, shit. I oh, know Kaya needs some cash. Let me just give him some bucks. Because mm. you know our profession, you know, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, um, you said something so profound. It's not really profound, but like you said something that I think would be a nice poem. Whenever my father was around. You know, it sounds like a, 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 market, oh, wow. <laughs> a market theater play. Whenever father was around. <laughs> I just wanted to ask oh, you one that, last question. Amazing. <laughs> one last question before we move on. You mentioned uh, Mozambique. And you, you know what's happening right now in Mozambique. What are your thoughts about it with the whole um, ISIS fighting terrorists that is happening in the north parts of Mozambique? You know what, Noel, if you're not talking about South Africa or the UK or Mozambique, Mozambique is really close to my heart. Uh, like I just told you, you know, it was the first foreign country I went into and, you know, spent a lot of time there. So mm. what is currently happening is really heartbreaking is. in so many cases, because I think it speaks to the rooted issue in Africa, where the issue of the cast of natural resources. Mm. So prior to the discovery of the gas in that part of Mozambique, 
you had none of this stuff. Mm. So suddenly, with the discovery of the largest deposits of gas worth over billions of US dollars and stuff, now you have insurgency, you have incursions, you have mm. the terror-related attacks. So this is really a sponsored war. It is. Someone is trying to get the resources and mm. not pay anything because mm. you know you look at the DRC as well you know there are so many instances in our continent where countries where resources are quite plenty so you have everything you know you have uh, the gold you have the diamond you have the cobalt and everything but then suddenly there's like this war there's like this civil war and mm. You know, everybody's calling for cessation of hostilities. So I think what's happening in Mozambique is quite regrettable because this would have helped our neighboring country to be a giant yes. energy. You know, gas is very key. You know, the energy, we struggle with energy in South Africa. So this would have really just put Mozambique on the mark. Hmm. But for me, no, I think our static leaders have failed because this has been a long-standing issue. Mm. It, it did not start in Palma. It started long time ago, as early as 2016, or even way too earlier. Mm. But our leaders have not really been forming a coordinated response where they try and tackle this problem. Because as we speak right now, it's widening mm. and it's going to become a massive problem mm. where you know, our borders would be affected, where even us would be affected. But I mean, I think what's happened in Palma was just a sharp reminder that leaders have to act. Yeah. I don't know if SNDF can do it, but oh. I know that. <laughs> Will my banner cope? <laughs> Malema told, um, Malema told Ramaphosa to send uh, the, the military. He's like, yeah, you've been saying you've got a strong military, send them. Let's see. Let's see how they act. So, <laughs> Kaya, um, I think it's time to get into the quiz. Oh my goodness, I'm utterly nervous. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't be. I mean, it's easy. I oh hope my not. god. So, I'm Ka quaking in my boots right now. <laughs> Kaya Lishle Kumar. So, Kaya, why do we call you Kaya and not Kaya? Well, I, I think it's quite popular when you just say Kaya. But yeah. let me tell you something really interesting. Um, my Most of my siblings call me Kayo mm. uh, or <laughs> OK. Or simply they just say K. Okay. No. Whenever someone says to me, Kaya Lise, I always know OK. That's an ENCA viewer because <laughs> they always want to say my full name. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, 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 but you know, I've, I've reached a point where I've said to my family and to all those who are pretty close to me, you know what, guys? Kayo is banned. You know, <laughs> I'm a 32 year old now. <laughs> so Kaya sounds better. So you better just refer. Kayo <laughs> sounds cool. It's like, yo, I'm going to chill with Kayo. You know, me and Kayo, yeah, and I could do exactly. like this cool thing. And it's so, easy on the time. <laughs> so Kayo, Kayo is cool. I should start calling you Kayo. I mean, you've been called oh Kay Kaya Lili, Kaya Lili, uh, people sometimes. Oh my goodness. Ka can you see Le, Kaya Lili, <laughs> okay. Kaya Lisha, you know, different versions. <laughs> it's, it's the same with Aldrian and Pia. Like the things they call Aldrian. Um, Aldriana. I was just oh like, my goodness. Such a simple <laughs> name. <right>? Anyway, <laughs> moving on, your first question is... Oh, goodness me. So nervous. You can always ask for a clue. Okay. The, the NEC therefore condemned the establishment, the establishment of groups operating as organ organized faction within the ANC to undermine the ideological and organizational integrity of the ANC. Who said this? Is it President Cyril Ramaphosa or Deputy President David Mabuza? Oh my goodness, it goes without saying, it has to be the President Cyril Ramaphosa. <laughs> Do you think I was going to make it that simple for you? 
<laughs> I get over yourself. The answer oh, goodness. you are looking for is Are you ready? Single yeah. Mama Forza. <laughs> One point! <laughs> yes! I'm so thrilled. What, what's your take on the whole ANC um, giving um, Ace Mahashule 30 days or whatever uh, to, to, you know, to step aside or whatever that thing is? Or do you have any, I know that you love politics. So what, what's your take on that? You know what? I, I think these are very rough times for the African National Congress. I mean, you go back to so many NGCs, elective conferences. One common thing that, that they've always mentioned, the issue of factionalism, mm. the issue of buying of votes, the issue of members of other members. So, you know, the Nazareth politics and stuff. I think for me, this is just like a very tough time because obviously, he's under the impression that okay look the ANC delegations or the, the the delegated members who went to Nazareth elected him so they do have a right to say that's our man but then you also do have a resolution that is very categorical about the issue of corruption mm. and as a matter of fact if he was a very good and, and a very graceful person he would have stepped down a long time ago of his own accord, mm. especially because corruption is a massive setback and it's regrettable because the ANC all the time, you know, you see the statements, we denounce, we condemn corruption, but then, you know, they are all this, all this explosive stuff. So, but, you know, it's a very critical moment for the ANC because, you know, just like what the EFF leader said, the office of the secretary general that's a powerful office mm. that's a ceo of the party mm. so if you're removing him i mean like out of a zoom meeting again i mean it speaks volumes about a lot of challenges facing the movement as opposed to having a special congress so ideally for me i think right now because mr mahashile did not resign himself i think having a special congress you know, virtually and find a way to make it as innovative as possible. That would have worked. And, but I mean, you know, it's it's such a massive problem. So I don't know how he's going to deal with it, but we're counting now, you know, 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is counting. Okay. <laughs> the next question is, we have already missed our own deadline to vaccinate our health workers by a massive margin and we are certain to miss our own deadline to vaccinate two-thirds of our population by an even bigger margin. Who said this? Is it John Stian Hazen or Musi Maimani? Who said this? Woo! I, I need to wear my thinking cap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my god, I think here I will have to shoot in the dark. You'll have to forgive me. Is, is it John? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Who are you going with? <laughs> it sounds like a critical, it's a very critical assessment. So I, I will have to shoot in the dark and say it's John Stain Hazen. My money can't make a critical assessment. Well, I mean, he's running a movement and he says it's an, a political movement. Daddy <laughs> <laughs> can be crit critical too. Do, how many minutes do I have? <laughs> you have no minutes. Who are we going with? Is it John? Are you going with John or are you going with my Oh mind? my God, this is so, this is so name biting. <laughs> I mean, other previous contenders should have warned me. Woo! Do, do I have to revise it? You know what? I'm taking my wild guess. It's John. If I fail, I'm taking a plunge. So I think it's John Stain Hazen. Well, well, well. We all have to fall at some point. The answer you are looking for is... John Stain 
Woo! <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. I mean, I, I never saw it coming, but hey, you know what? Wild guesses all the time, all this work. And the vaccination. I mean, do you think we're gonna get vaccinated in time? I just feel like we're gonna go into a third wave, a fourth wave, some type, a lot of waves. I mean, it's it's not happening. I mean, if, if if the UK is going into so many lockdowns, I mean, who are we? If the UK is fading so bad, you know what, Neil? It's I think it's quite embarrassing to say the least. Especially because you're looking at the capabilities we have in South Africa. For heaven's sake, we have Aspen right here in Grebecha. And, and aren't, you, aren't you so proud of me? I said yeah. it so well. <laughs> you did. Especially because on Twitter, I got criticized for asking, how do I pronounce <laughs> Grebecha? But I'm so happy. <laughs> you but you know, that. coming back to the issue around the vaccination. But I mean, look. I think we have a very good strategy. It's fun, it's beautiful that we're starting with the healthcare workers. You know, they've been right at the call phase, facing all kinds of challenges. So that's a very good start. But now we just need to accelerate just a bit, you know, mm. so that we, we have an opportunity to normalize our lives and, and be able to go to Blue. Yes. Uh, and many other places. <laughs> the church, darling. The church. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I miss hitting the dance floor. Right. Without, like without going like this. With a mask. I, mean, I just want to dance without a mask. <laughs> I I know. I know. So, your following question is: You've got two now. So that's good. Oh goodness. Nobody has gotten less than two, so you're doing well. The, oh, following, the following question is, and I must express my deepest condolences at learning of the loss of life of one of our citizens. But I urge our mission and officials involved in it to continue all they can to provide assistance. Who said this? Is it Home Affairs Minister Aaron Mozwaledi or Derko Minister Naledi Pando? Pando. You know what? Without a shadow of a doubt, it, it has to be the top diplomat, Dr. Naledi Grace Pando. No, but this thing has to do with Home Affairs and like citizens. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think you want to be the first person to get it too. <laughs> oh, <that's true>. so, <laughs> no, I've been a journalist for almost 13 years. I ca I cannot believe it. You know, <laughs> just saying. It, it's it's a long time. So <laughs> the answer you are looking for. Is. Now, lady, you can go. Oh. She would have said, Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and your, the following question Ooh, is. It's getting tougher now. <laughs> it's a terrible mistake. You can't move. A secretary general through Zoom. I'm going to repeat that because the wine is killing my tongue. It's a terrible mistake. You cannot remove a secretary general through Zoom. Who said this? Is it Mzondile Masina? Ding ding ding. Oh, Julius Abdisilo Malema. It has to be the commander in chief <laughs> of the economic freedom fighters, Julius Malema. The answer you are wrongfully looking for is. <gasps> <Julius Malema. laughs> oh my God! And, and you know what? 
I'm carrying my notes pad, but there's nothing here. There's absolutely nothing. Except <laughs> my face capture notes. <laughs> And you mentioned this before, like when you when we were discussing the ANC and EC, you actually mentioned what Julius Malema said, and I'm like, man, that is that is the following question. Then I had to mix my questions around. Okay, cool. Let's move on. No, 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 no. Oh, we, yes, we're moving on because we've spoken about this. But I just wanted oh to. My God. But I wanted to ask you, what? How do you feel about my? But like, I think Stian Hazen also does it. But like, what? How do you feel about Julius Malema always interjecting or always knowing what's happening in the ANC? Do you think that um, shows lack of um, loyalty to ANC members? How does he get all this information? Do you have an opinion about that? I think he's quite well versed about the ANC politics. I mean. When you look at Malema, you know, he was part of the ANC. Mm -hmm. He knows the mechanics of the party. He knows the tactics, the, the strategies, how the ANC, the weaknesses of the ANC. Mm -hmm. And even today, you know, he would always say, say to you, look, I know William Mabe, I know Mzanti Lamasina, I know Fikile Mbalula, you know, we might be on the opposite sides, but you know, once we're out of politics and everything, we can have a party, we can have a good time. And it's always really good for political reporters. You know, uh, you know, I look back when I used to do the local politics in South Africa, something I still love, by the way, something I, I still do always say, it would always be so close to my heart because Ka that's Kaya where from we Kaya Kaya FM. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good time, Neil. <laughs> it was, it was. And I used to do all the big stories. God uh, bless them. Cool. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Go. My last question to you. It's also related to. Oh my God. It's also gonna... related. I mean, you've got four so far. I mean, so far you've done better than um, Sisona from News 24. You've done better than Kaya Kaba. <laughs> Kaya, oh, Kaya Kaba? Mm. Oh, I, I'm astounded. What? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Kaya couldn't even get the uh, um, Bladen Zimande's question. It was like, yeah, I am a very loyal member to the SACP. If oh I, my goodness. If I get oh this my one, God. If I get this one, they better rebuke my membership. So I think they're in the process of rebuking his membership. But anyway, I'm, I'm shocked to the core. I'm <laughs> like, shocked to the core. <laughs> and he's gonna watch this, Kaya. You are disappointing. Oh, then, you know what? I'm you, <laughs> not you. The Kaya. okay. <laughs> Wrong Kaya. <laughs> Wrong Kaya. Um, your following question is this: Who said this? What is most likely to happen is that those who feel aggrieved by the decision, such as the general secretary of the party, would most likely mobilize with the ranks to push against the decision. So the person who said this is a political analyst. So which political analyst said this? Is it Somatota? Somatota? Kenny or Wolf Matera. Who said that? Woo, Lord have mercy, you got me there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been nailed finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I got you. You know what? I, this is a wild guess as well, and I yeah. hope my hunch will not mislead me. Uh, if, if I get it wrong, you know what? I tried, buddy. I think it has to be Ralph Matecha. You are even sweating, are you sure? Or is it just the... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Ralph Matecha. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'm so nervous. The answer Terribly so. Is... The answer is. Oh. 
much of Oh my god, I, I'm so happy. A whole general reporter? I'm so proud of myself. Hi, general reporters. I love you so much. I can't believe you got five out of five. This is so unfair. Sleek. I mean, look, you, you, you tried. Sleek got five out of five. Um, uh, Natasha last week almost got five. She got four. No, you got five. Oh, she tried. She's a beautiful soul. She I tried. Know, she's funny. She also did fantastically well. Yeah, she <laughs> did amazing. But Kaya, as we are about to wrap this up, uh, what's next for you? What does the future hold for Kaya Lisa? Oh my God, you know, no, that's a very tough question for me because I see myself having a radio show. At times, I also see myself anchoring this beautiful Pan-African show beamed across the regions from the southern parts to the eastern parts of Africa, to West Africa, all the way to North Africa, right in the central parts of Africa as well. But then I see myself somewhere in the US doing my studies somewhere in Washington DC. So I have a lot of things really going through my mind, but I think possibly the most accurate one would have to be the one where I would have a show. I think mm. I've, uh, I've really tried to do my contribution. And I always tell young reporters that, you know what, once you have done journalism for so many years, you can do any story. You can wake up tomorrow, they say, you're going to the constitutional court, you will do very well. And they say you have to go and do a vaccination story, you'll do very well. So like irrespective of any bits that you do, you know, once you, you've become like a, a senior journalist, <laughs> you know, no, and oh, here's the thing about me also, I'm not into rankings. Yeah. I always love when someone says, I'm a journalist. It's okay if you say one is a junior or one is a senior. I mean, it's great, but I, my personal preference, all of us just one, have one cap where you just say you're a journalist but you know to go back to your question and not really <laughs> you know <laughs> the politics of yeah. ranking the hierarchy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but you know let me tell you something if you do politics in south africa uh, i can tell you without a shadow of a doubt your career will rise you'll reach a highest point possible and Amen. for me, I think it's it's good, you know, it's it's really good. But also, I feel like general reporters also deserve a very good opportunity, you know, environmental reporters, because you know, oftentimes the beats that are neglected or overlooked, you know, they are also critical as well, as much as politics is, because from where you're walking to to everything you do, there's always a political implication. Mm. No, I, I think it is very important that all beats are recognized. And um, yeah, I mean, we live in a, a, a politically polarized society. So polit political reporters, of course, their careers would just jump to new heights. But, you know, as some researchers are saying that when when the media is too pol politicized, politically pol this wine but anyway when the media politicized <laughs> politicized <laughs> poli polarized um <laughs> it's just a sign of a weakening democracy because yes political journalism is very important but also you have health journalists who are supposed to be going in the eastern cape and finding out Absolutely. what's happening with the covid 19 yeah. you have um environmental journalists who must find out what's happening so. i mean there's very so many there are so many communities that are being moved from their lands because mining companies are moving in so you see when this yeah. beats are being moved uh we don't even have m m municipal reporters anymore in south africa so councillors are eating money as they do councillors don't even have money for anything shameful. nobody's reporting about that but we're going to report about the NDC meeting that took place um between our we, we you see we 
we, we, we prioritizing factions that are happening within um, a governing party, but we don't know what's happening in municipalities. We don't know what's happening to our health sector. Do you understand? It, it, it's mm. sad. It said that all of that is shuttered. It, it's closed off, but it's also a sign that our democracy has reached a stage where it is it, it is decaying. And I just hope we might see a revival of it. But I mean, right now, journalism is just a beast. It's all about just getting the clickbait and getting the stories and feeling the bulletins. So I have no faith for this field at all until, <laughs> until we get new leadership. But I just want to say thank you so much, Carly, sir, for joining us. So, Lovely. So, ladies and gents, if you're at home and you've made it so far into the podcast, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share this video with your friends. And also, that means I might get money one day and... You know, journalism is not paid, so we all try it all we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Quite next rough, I believe. Good, good bad. Good bad. Good bad. Until the next episode of Who Said This. Ladies and Woo, gents. What's an honor. Thank you. Bye.